Hey everyone, going to do a video today on what's inside one of these EMD engines. So we have two here. This is a 16 645 and that's a 12 645. Both of them are complete. But I'm going to show you ones uh, that are in the middle of an overhaul. So we have this one here. This is a 12 645. There's a plate here. 645 F7, 900 RPM, 2,550 horsepower. Here, this is the air box. So that's a liner there. Inside the liner, you can see the piston and the rings. There's another one. That's the piston skirt. Again. Rings. Rings. Here's the crankcase. So as you can see, they've just installed new power packs, meaning new pistons and liners. It's just missing the top end jewelry here. So injector, valve bridges, fuel lines and fuel rack. There's the cam. There's a water outlet right there beneath the exhaust. And here on the liners, that's the water inlet, cooling water inlet. So these engines, the F7s, have a big turbocharger. No blowers like the older ones and the 567s. So it's being installed now. Now this is what makes them special. And look in there, that's a clutch. So these being two-stroke engines, at low RPM or low load, the turbocharger is actually clutched into the engine and acts as a supercharger or a blower at low speeds. When the load comes up it declutches and becomes a turbo. So here's the generator end. And down here we have the charge air coolers. So this cools the air after it leaves the turbo and before it makes it into the engine. Some more of it there. This is the air box and the crankcase covers. So these are the power pack pulling tools, so that means they're piston and liner removal tools. And uh, they go up here to the overhead, and you use a chain fall to pull them out. It's actually relatively easy. And uh, the liners, pistons, power packs are held in by these frogs here. So they do two per frog. Okay, so that last engine was a 12, and now I'm going to show you a 16. So we have the valve covers here, crankcase, airbox covers. This engine just had two new water pumps put on. A crunch. So this engine had new power packs put in, and here is all the top end jewelry. So you have the unit injector and the four exhaust valves with the bridges in between. Fuel lines and fuel rack there. All down the line. And again, there's the top of the piston there, so you're looking through the liner. And the connecting rod, crank. Down there's the oil sump. The charge air cooler. This one just had a new turbo installed. So you can see the turbo here, exhaust going out. It's the gear drive, the clutch is in there. And then the big compressor wheel. So these turbos are definitely the weakest part of the engine and uh, usually go about 7,000 hours, uh, give or take on the load before the turbo needs to come off and be rebuilt. But besides the turbo, uh, the technology in these engines uh, hasn't changed much at all since the late 30s, mid 30s. 
So this is the flywheel and the main generator. Now obviously this isn't in a locomotive, uh, but the setup is pretty much the same. These are really common in uh, the marine applications as well. So lube and fuel oil purifiers, air intake for the 12, and there's a 16 there. Another 12 cylinder, it's pretty much together. And a big 16 here. So here are the main and the connecting rod bearings. So here are some main bearings there. Four connecting rod bearing and then thrust bearings down there. These are all old. I mean they're scored but these are still serviceable. You know, it's not like the engine was going to blow up or anything on these, but uh, these engines are taken care of really well, so it's being overhauled. So these are the start air compressors. These engines use an air starter, uh, which is a little bit different than most uh, locomotive train applications that have a big electric starter. So this is usually uh, what you find in marine applications. All right, so here we have the valve bridges. So there's two of these per cylinder, and uh, the cam actuates this to open the exhaust valves. So that's how one cam follower can do two exhaust valves with one of these bridges. Here are the injectors, big unit injectors. These are the old ones, and um, they're all progress rail, OEM. This is the fuel rack here, and uh, the cam actuates the injector here, fires it. No electronics. These are the rod caps. So these are fork and basket engines, so you have the baskets and the forks. So you get two cylinders on the same crank throw. They're not opposed, so it means uh, each cylinder is an offset, they're the same location on both sides. Alright, so I'll try and give you a peek on the inside of uh, one of these complete 16s. That's what it's supposed to look like. All progress rail, OEM, power packs. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments section. And uh, if you're interested in this, go ahead and check out my page. I have another video of uh, all four of these engines running uh, with a lot of detailed explanation. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. Here's the tag for the 16, 16 645 F7B, 3,505 horsepower and 900 RPM. Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one.